This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. We are glad to have you with us. Well, the numbers surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic are improving, and that's where we begin our conversation with Rex Nelson, Senior Editor of the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Rex, always good to see you, and I got to say, I'm starting to like the the locks on your hair there. You you got a little pro wrestler or 19th century Arkansas backwoods guy going, which is it? Yeah, don't get used to it, Roby, because I've already had that first shot. And two weeks after I've had that second shot, I'm going to the barber for the first time in 13 months. So don't get used to this. It'll soon be gone. Well, can you put it in a ponytail? That's what I really need to know. <laughs> <laughs> old aging hippie. I've, I've always wanted to be that. My dad never let me grow my hair long, see, so this is a first for me. Let's begin with the, where, where things are. It is all but cer- certain that the governor is going to lift the mask mandate on March 31st. I don't think that the lifting of the public health emergency order will be too far behind. Are we ready to reopen? Are you ready to reopen? I think as people get vaccines, they are they are ready to reopen. I think the big goal now has to be getting as many shots into as many arms as we possibly can. We fell behind the rest of the country on averages during the winter storms. I mean, we basically had two weeks, Roby, when things just shut down, as you know. That put us behind the national average. We've got to catch up with the national average and hopefully get ahead has been using the National Guard. I say use more if we have to. I think this is the most important operation we've had since World War II, probably, and we've got to get that done. So on the one hand, we've got to get as many shots done as we can, and on the other hand, we've got to have that massive education campaign to get those who are a bit resistant to getting the vaccine to agree to do so. Those are the two goals right now, I think, for the state. And when you are liberated to continue with the World War II theme here, what is going to be one of the first things that you will do? Oh, I'm going to go inside some restaurants. I mean, I have done a lot of carry out uh, and I've tried to support our independent restaurants, but man, I wish miss sitting inside. You know what a foodie I am. So I'm going to go out and support some good Arkansas independent restaurants. Those Those people have been amazing. I mean, the way they have adjusted to stay alive, we have lost some famous restaurants, but somehow over these past 13 months, Roby, most have survived. And I didn't think nearly as many would survive as have so far. So once people are vaccinated, once we're getting back to normal, I do hope that Arkansans will go out and support those independent locally owned Arkansas restaurants. And I can uh, assume, I hope, that you will be writing about those experiences. <laughs> oh, I'm absolutely. Not... <laughs> right. I'm, I, I'm doing some writing uh, about them uh, coming up, in fact, because we recently had the Arkansas Food Hall of Fame. And, of course, we had the fire over at Jones Barbecue Diner, our James Beard Award winner in Mariana. And uh, so I'll be writing about that and our barbecue pit masters in the state. Just amazing, though, how our Kansans stepped up to support the rebuilding of Jones Barbecue. I, I was blown away. Uh, uh, I helped the Venture Center here in Little Rock set up a GoFundMe campaign for that. It alone raised more than $65,000 in a two-week period, Roby. Wow, that's incredible. All right, let's turn our attention to the state capitol and the Arkansas legislature. The 93rd General Assembly is, uh, I think they just finished week 10, if uh, my math is right on that. Uh, I want to talk about what you perceive as them doing right and what you perceive as them perhaps uh, they could do a better job on. And I want to start with what you think they could do a better job on now. What are you seeing right now in terms of the, the negatives of what this legislate, legislative session has been? I'm seeing a lot of divisive social issues that really don't have anything to do with state government, Roby. And in, in my mind, and I'm kind of a traditional small government guy, an efficiency guy, the real goal of a legislative session ought to be to set a budget in which we spend the dollars as efficient as efficiently as possible, and then we provide services that are 
hopefully, again, as efficient as possible. We ensure efficient state government. I think we kind of allowed this legislative session to get away from that and go into these divisive social issues that in my mind really aren't the purview of state government. So I, I think that has been the downfall of this legislative session. We've got way too much of this taking from national organizations, model legislation that they won't file in multiple states and filing it in Arkansas when it really doesn't have anything to do with Arkansas. And, and that has made this overall a very divisive and, and not as nearly as good a session as it should have been. Yeah, they're bringing back the old adage that instead of meeting uh, every two years for 60 days, they should meet every 60 years for two days. <laughs> yeah, I'm all for that. Spider Rowland, the old uh, columnist for the Arkansas Gazette, I think came up with that. Two days every 60 years. All right, let's talk about what's been on the positive front. What have been some things that you have seen move forward uh, that you consider um, right priorities, good priorities? Well, I, I think uh, we, we've been helped by the fact that uh, we have a very good, moderate speaker in Matthew Shepard over on the House side. I mean, I, I fear to think if one of the bomb throwing ideologues were the speaker and in the leadership, uh, what we would face. But we've got a moderate, pragmatic governor. He's got those who are certainly giving him headaches right now, but we've also got a moderate, pragmatic speaker. Senator Hickey over on the Senate side, I think, has done a good job of leadership also. So that has helped tamp at least a little bit of that down in this session. So I think that's a good thing. I also love the fact that uh, from a budget standpoint, that in using this big flow of federal money that we're uh, going to be getting as a state, that it appears we're putting the focus on that in getting broadband into rural areas of Arkansas. Roby, I have long, going back to my days with the Delta Regional Authority, preached the fact that broadband is to this century for rural America what getting electricity was in the last century into those areas. It's just crucial if we're going to save rural Arkansas. And I've got to tell you, I really love that focus on broadband right now. All right, I, uh, it's a little over a year away, the uh, Republican and Democratic primaries of 2022, but we already see some races shaping up. We have right now today, Sarah Huckabee versus Leslie Rutledge for the governor's uh, nomination on the Republican side. We see Jan Morgan challenging Senator John Bozeman in a Republican primary for the US Senate, at least uh, she's announced that. If you're, you're a political reporter, which race do you want to cover next year? Well, obviously, the focus, as it always is, is going to be on the governor's race in Arkansas and seeing if we continue that pragmatism that we have seen going back over 50 years uh, in Arkansas. So I, I think that's the big question as we go into next year and we look at the various candidates for governor. Uh, on the Senate side, I mean, I mean, we saw Jan Morgan, who really represents the the far right, uh, the, what, I, what I consider a really dangerous fringe, frankly, of the Arkansas Republican Party run a race and, and not, not do too well against Asa Hutchinson. And I think when all is said and done, that'll probably be the same story in the primary against Senator Bozeman. Uh, last question for you. Um, do you think a pragmatist can win a Republican primary in Arkansas in 2022? You know, I am not quite ready to write off uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders as being pragmatic, seeing how pragmatic her father was. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know those, there are those who have already branded her. She's just going to be the Trump wing of the party. Uh, I'm not ready to write that off. I think we're still, like you said, a year away. There's still a lot to hear and I'm going to sit back. I'm going to read a lot. I'm going to listen to a lot and see what these candidates say they're going to do for Arkansas. Don't run a race like you're running for the U.S. Senate. This is not a national race. We want to know what you're going to do for the people of Arkansas. 